When we look back at 2009 H1N1, there were many successes, but there were many challenges. State and local health departments have been cut in terms of their budget recently, and they've lost staff. And so if we had a severe pandemic going forward, would they have enough staff to be able to handle all the distribution and dispensing of antiviral medicines? And that's a question that we are concerned about. During the 2009 H1N1 pandemic in December of 2009, we were moving very quickly from a shortage of pandemic vaccine to a particular overabundance of vaccine. And at that time, we reached out to pharmacy companies and asked them if we could directly ship them vaccine. We were looking at the holidays coming up. We were concerned that doctor's offices and public health clinics might be closed. And of course, pharmacies are open at nights, weekends, and even on holidays. Uh, those pharmacy companies that collaborated and partnered with CDC really extended the reach of public health. We were able to ship 5.4 million doses of pandemic vaccine to a very few locations and they, in turn, through their own distribution channels, were able to send it to 17,000 retail locations. Pharmacies extend the reach of public health during an emergency. Pharmacists and pharmacies are familiar with drug dispensing, are familiar with the regulatory requirements around drug dispensing, and deal with patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Pharmacies are really a bellwether about what's going on in the community. If a pharmacist starts to see a certain uptake in medications or a sudden uptake in, in over-the-counter prescriptions or, or requests, they can alert local health and say, hey, we might have an outbreak occurring. I think public health would benefit in many ways from partnering with pharmacies. Pharmacists now, as healthcare professionals, can provide vaccinations, they can provide coaching and counseling. They're moving into areas to help people manage their chronic health conditions, and they also are taking on many prevention and primary care services. Uh, no one but governmental public health can do epidemiology, laboratory, surveillance, community communications, and command a control of an event. But can public health hand off the distribution of medicines to another entity, like pharmaceutical distributors and pharmacies? And we believe there's a way forward. It's very important that prior to an emergency, we work with our pharmacy partners to figure out what exactly we would like their role to be. I think the best tip for creating a partnership between a local health department and a local pharmacy is really you've got to put the face time in and the shoe leather in. So I think the first step for any local health department or pharmacy really seeking to establish a relationship is to get out of your office and, and go to the other office and, and introduce yourself. You know, all disasters start locally. All disasters are local incidents. And it's the first responders in the community that are really going to set the stage for how the disaster is going to play out. That first 24 hours is a crucial time period. And that is not the time to try to forge partnerships. You should not be exchanging business cards in the middle of a disaster. I think the, the relationship or the partnership between community and, and, and national chain pharmacies and the public health community is clearly a success story uh, because public health can't do it alone. Pharmacists are healthcare professionals just like we are. And those healthcare professionals of, in pharmacy and the healthcare professionals in public health actually share a mission, and that is the good of the public, the good of the patients. And I think if partnerships can be developed based on that, um, we have a smooth way forward. Partnerships between people and organizations are based on trust, and that trust can't develop overnight. So the best advice I have is for public health to reach out to the pharmacies in their communities today, not only the large chain pharmacies, but the smaller independent pharmacies as well. I think we're at the point in public health preparedness where we need to use innovative solutions in order to better respond to emergencies. This is just one more example of how building partnerships and leveraging resources and assets can really help make a community better prepared. The idea of public-private partnerships, it's not a new idea. What's new about this is that you know, we're advancing a notion 
into a real strategic and operational benefit where you know, there are these partnerships that have been created and are being you know, matured um, around the country where pharmacists and pharmacies are really becoming a critical component of local and state um, emergency response plans and operations.